Good morning, lovely people. Long time no speak. How are you all? I hope you're well. I'm well, I'm fine. I've just been ridiculously busy in the last few weeks. I haven't even been to my garden for two weeks. How ridiculous. There was a day last week when I was planning to go, but it was lashing with rain. And actually, we're getting into that time of year now where... <laughs> I'm not a fair weather gardener as such. I don't mind gardening in the cold, but there are some days when it's just simply a no-go because it's lashing with rain. And in any case, the garden slows down so much at this time of year that I start to kind of focus slightly more on my indoor projects, shall we say projects? Yeah, projects. So a lot of my time indoors is spent cooking, <laughs> mucking around with food, experimenting as, as you know. But also a lot of my time, especially over these winter months, well, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time sewing. That's for, that's one thing. That's gonna be stuff for the shop, bunting, etc., etc. to get loads ready, hopefully. Maybe not in time for Christmas, but certainly in time for next spring, hopefully. But so much of what I do indoors <laughs> revolves around trying to live a plastic free life as much as possible. Okay, so you guys know that I'm always banging on about plastic, especially when I'm pulling it out of the soil in my garden. It's so frustrating. I think what's been interesting this year, I've certainly noticed is that the whole issue of our disposal of plastic, making too much plastic in the first place and our disposal of it has become really quite a mainstream topic. And I think it's partly because I didn't see it, but I think there was a documentary earlier in the year that David Attenborough, oh, I love David Attenborough, um, that the lovely David Attenborough um, narrated about how we're choking our seas with plastic. I think by now most of us have seen images of sea turtles and you know all sorts of sea creatures wrapped up in plastic and seabirds that are, are swallowing or consuming so much plastic they're starving to death and it's all hideous and I don't want to focus on the hideous stuff because I think like I said I think most of us by now hopefully have seen those sorts of images and, and gradually, I hope, as a species, us human beings will start to realise that we have to do something about it. So, personally, I've always tried to be a mindful consumer, shall we say. Um, I don't think I've all, ever been a massive consumer of plastic stuff, but about four or... I think it's actually coming up for five years ago, I made a New Year's resolution. Now, normally I don't stick to my New Year's resolutions, but this one I did. I decided to see if I could go completely plastic free. It's not been possible for me. So for instance, I'm looking at you guys right now through the lens of a camera, the case of which is made from plastic. But having said that, there are loads and loads of ways that we can all make small changes, gradual changes to really improve the situation. Now, I'm not saying that plastic is inherently evil. You know, it doesn't have a mind of its own. It's not out to get us all. So I'm not suggesting that you go through your whole home right now, grab everything that's plastic and throw it away because in a way that defeats the sort of the exercise even more the point with plastic is we should try to use it and use it and use, that that we already have we should just keep trying to use it for as long as we can before we throw it away and one of the issues with plastic is generally speaking it's used for throwaway products ah oh, it it just to me it doesn't make sense that we're using this precious finite resource at great expense to make something to throw away. It just doesn't make sense to me. 
So like I said, there's all sorts of little changes you can make and I'm gonna show you a couple today that I hope you're gonna really enjoy and embrace. But just little swapsies. So for instance, I swapped two bamboo toothbrushes a few years ago. That's a really easy swap. Um, packed lunches, taking a packed lunch to work is, can make a huge difference. If you think of all the packaging that's around takeaway, lunchtime type food, that's masses and masses of packaging. Even though a lot of companies are trying to reduce it, it's still masses of plastic. A plastic fork to eat a salad with, that just doesn't make sense to me. So in your work bag, carry a little set of cutlery carry a napkin, a cloth napkin, so that we're not having takeaway paper napkins, which you dab your lips with and then throw away. Again, that's crazy to me. How many resources were used to make that paper napkin, which you've dabbed your lips with twice and <laughs> thrown away? So yeah, pack lunch for work, carry your own napkin, carry your own cutlery, reusable coffee cups, why is anybody still using a disposable coffee cup? I'm not going to tell you about it now. You can do your own research. But coffee cups are not recyclable. There we go. Said it. You can check out all of that online if you don't trust me. Anyway, so rather than being doomy and gloomy about what we can't do, um, let's be positive about what we can do. So today... <laughs> I'm going to share with you two of the little things I do to reduce my use of plastic. There's all sorts, but these two are really, really, really super duper simple. Excuse me one moment, someone's knocking at my door. I'm back. <laughs> that was my lovely downstairs neighbour. Um, we've had so much rain in the last 48 hours. We've actually had some more damage to the building. <gasps> it's just another worry. Um, so yeah, we were just strategizing about how we can deal with it. Anyway, as I was saying, two really simple things today. One, bees wax food wraps. Yay! And the other thing is an origami bin liner. So with both of these things, I'm using basically scraps, someone else's rubbish, etc., etc., to substitute something that would normally be plastic with something that's not. So let's start with the bees wax wraps. You're going to need some scraps of cotton. It needs to be cotton material because they're going to go in the oven at quite a high temperature. So any old scraps, I'm sure loads of us have odd bits of fat quarters sitting around that we haven't used, scraps left over from other projects. You could think about um, if finding material from a charity shop, not necessarily as material, but maybe a skirt from a charity shop, especially if it's quite a full pleated skirt, there'll be loads of fabric in it. Although having said that, my local charity shops have all gone really expensive, so you'd probably be better off just buying a yard of fabric meter sorry so yes some cotton fabric some beeswax either you can buy it as a solid little block and you can grate as much as you need or you can buy it ready beaded so the stuff i use is ready beaded purely because when i started doing all my own bits i bought a massive sack of the stuff it was really economical to buy a massive sack of it but it did come in a plastic bag. So once that's all used up, I will revert to using solid blocks, which I can hopefully buy just wrapped in paper. So yes, cotton, beeswax, and an oven. And that's it, yay! So this is great to do with the kids or grandchildren as well. Bit of supervision because scissors, oven, what have you. Essentially, you can make your wrap as big as your oven will take. So measure your biggest roasting dish or baking sheet, whatever you've got that you're gonna use, and cut your cloth to fit. So I'm going to do, my oven's really quite small, so I'm restricted. So I'm gonna do this one, which is about, it's about 25 by 30 something centimeters. 
Now you can either <clears throat> use pinking shears to cut the edge. Where are my pinking shears? I'll show you that in a second. Or you could just do a simple zigzag stitch along the edge just to stop it from fraying. Or you can do like I'm going to do in a second. Can you see? Um, it's not a fancy hem. It's just turned once and then I'll do a zigzag over the whole lot. The reason I'm going to do that is it makes sense to me to make something to last as long as possible so that it doesn't fray, wear out, whatever it is. I want this to be used over and over and over again. So I'm going to do a square one. I like the square ones for folding up and around sandwiches. I'll show you all this once they're actually made. And I'm also going to do a little round one today to show you, because I'll use the pinking sheets for that, so I'll show you those. And the little round ones are super useful, just literally for leftovers in the fridge, you can wrap it around a bowl, whatever. And again, in terms of size, you're only restricted by the size of your oven. So, let's get stuck in and make some beeswax food wraps. So for my round one, I'm going to quite simply trace around this side plate, which I know, because I've used it to sit on top of a bowl, I know that this plentifully <laughs> covers the size of bowl that I put leftovers in, into the fridge. I use the pinking shears when I make round ones just because it's so much easier than hemming a round one. Um, now, not everybody's going to have a pair of pinking shears to hand. <clears throat> if you don't, perhaps if you've got friends who sew, you may find that they have them. They're really, really handy. So yeah, just speak kindly to your friends and see if you can borrow a pair. And all they do, if you've not used pinking shears before, is it gives you this sort of, um, it cuts out little triangles as we go around. I didn't know how to describe it then. I've lost my words today. And all it means is it just helps to prevent the fraying and it saves the step of having to hem. So if you don't have a sewing machine, if you're not confident with the sewing machine, then do this one with your squares as well. And perhaps if you're doing it with younger children who haven't learnt to use a sewing machine yet, this might be a useful one for them to do too. And also I think the thing with kids is they, they want their instant gratification. And I think sitting down at a sewing machine to do a hem might take a little bit too long to gratify. Can you see the um, sort of spiky edges? It's not very clear on camera, is it? But, oh, can you see now? It just will stop the edge from fraying. Okay, so that's a little round one cut out and ready. I'm gonna quickly hem the square one and then we can get into the kitchen. So, nothing fancy, just a quick little zigzag. I don't even think the material is properly square, but I don't care about that for me. However, I'd say if you're making these as gifts, and what a lovely gift that would be, um, just make sure you square up your material and <laughs> be a little bit neater and take more time than I have. But like I say, this is just for me, don't care. I wanna get it in the oven. First things first, Preheat your oven to 200 degrees centigrade. Sorry, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit or gas mark. Um, I'm not even going to speculate. Yeah, so pop the oven on to 200. I can get two baking trays in my oven at a time, which isn't much, but it will do. And the other thing to say, obviously heating the oven just to do these seems a bit wasteful. So I've got a nut roast to go in as soon as these have been done. I've lined my um, roasting pans with parchment paper just to protect the pans a bit. You don't need to, 
However, what I will say is when the parchment paper comes out, that's also slightly waxed, so you can use the paper as a waxed paper to also be wrapping up your sarnies and what have you in. Okay, so time for the beeswax. Yum, yum, yum. For my little circle, I'm not going to need much more than a sort of dessert spoonful of the wax beads. Try to spread them out evenly, <laughs> as evenly as you can. It's okay, it's not rocket science and we will be, whoopsie, getting out a paintbrush later to spread them further. That will do for that one. And then for the larger one, I'm going to use about um, an eighth of a cup. Again, it's, it's a bit sort of trial and error how we go with these sorts of quantities for these sorts of sizes. If, if you're doing it from a block, oh, I should have weighed this first and I could tell you the weight. Look, just have a go. Sometimes you might think, oh, that's too much, that's too waxy. You might think it's not quite enough. But the great thing is, if you feel like it's not quite enough, you can add a bit more and then just pop it straight back in the oven. Okay, so there we go. They're both now got their little waxy beads on them. See, actually that's not very evenly spread, but they are a bit more evenly spread. Time to get them in the oven. They're literally going to take about one and a half to two minutes. Obviously if you've got a glass door you can look through it to see when they're done. <laughs> Try to contain your excitement. <laughs> Just while they're in there, it's time to go and fetch out your next bit of kit. For me, it's one of these pastry brushes. Now, this is silicone and plastic. Ooh. However, I picked this up secondhand in a charity shop and it's perfect for the job. You could use a paintbrush or pretty much any type of brush because when it comes out, we're going to give it all a little bit of a brush to make sure everything's evenly coated. See you back here in one minute. Oh, how'd you come? And your friend. Got you there for a second. Oh, it's hot. Okay, so once it come out, I don't know if it'll it pick up on here, but um, in the corners, it's slightly less, there's slightly less wax there, so just with the paintbrush, pastry brush, whatever you're using. Give it a scrudge around. Just where it comes up at the corners. Oh. And then, whip it out of your tray. Now, if you really have the space and you're really clever at home, you could rig up a sort of little washing line for it. I don't have the space for that, so literally all I do is I waft it for a moment. It'll soon cool. And actually, even as I waft it, I can feel it start to stiffen. Brilliant. That one's almost done. Just going to rest it back there a second, quickly brush this one over while it's still oh, nervous to boat with that one, but that's okay because it was pretty much covered. And my little circular one. Wafty, wafty, waft. Lovely jobs. Oh, actually you can see there's a little there's a clump of wax there where I've not taken out of the tray quickly enough. So what I'm going to do is simply pop it back on the tray, whack it straight back in the oven for another minute. That's the problem with doing a batch if you're on your own because by the time you've attended to your first one, you can see that lovely glistening where it's waxing now. By the time you've attended to your first one, your other one will start to set in the tray. 
if you're doing it with your kids or grandkids, perfect. You can each have a tray and each are turned into a tray. So just pop that one aside a second. We'll get this other one back out. That's done it. I can see it's moving to it again. Now this time quick, whoopsie, quick sticks. Get it brushed out. Lifted. There we go. And give it a bit of a waft. Wafty waft. Once they've cooled a bit, I'll show you how I use them. There. Lovely. Right. Let's have a play with them. So here we've got our lovely bits of waxed cloth. So for example, if I was putting some leftovers in the fridge, pop my cloth on the top, and here's the beauty of it. The warmth from my hands will just very, very slightly melt the wax. Not exactly melt it, but it just makes it a little bit pliable. around a couple of times and there we go that's my leftovers nicely contained I don't know if you can get an idea from that it's good and tight and contained and that can go straight in the fridge or if it's something I don't want to go in the fridge but leave out that's great as well flies can't get in yucky stuff can't get in then once I've decided that it's time to eat my leftovers take off my wax wrap there we go, comes off super duper easy. You don't need to do anything with it. You could, if you want to, press it a little, flatten it out again. With the inside edge that's been in contact, or not even necessarily contact with the food, but just very slightly warm, soapy water, give it a wipe down. Obviously you don't want your water too hot because it will melt the wax. And then for storing, either store them all flat in your cupboard, or you could, roll it, store them rolled up, however you want. So great as a food cover for my bowl. With the larger square ones, again, covering a larger bowl, obviously, but what I like these for is for packed lunches. So I pop my bit of lunch in the middle, give it a couple of folds, and then again, just the warmth of my hands is gonna create that sort of crease to hold. Fold it up, fold it up. In fact, you know, there you go. You can do it that way first of all. You've made your pocket, pop whatever it is in. This isn't quite big enough for lots of sarnies. It would certainly be big enough for a filled bagel. Yum, 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 yum. And it will pretty much hold itself closed. If you're worried about you know, using it to cart food around, for instance, like for a picnic or for your packed lunch for work. Dead simple. Just tie a ribbon around it or a piece of string. You could, if you wanted to, if you're being really fancy pants, before you wax it, you could actually stitch a button onto here and a button onto here. And then um, once you've folded it, you can always just go ju 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 figure of eight with a piece of string to hold it closed. I don't bother because I don't have any spare buttons hanging around. And I find just a piece of string or a ribbon keeps everything perfectly safe and happy in there. And again, end of the day, once you've finished using it, hands, hands, warmth the pans to flatten it, give it a nice um, wipe on the inside with some warm soapy water. And again, store it, you could roll it up. Actually, just thinking about it and thinking what I was saying about cutlery, um, another really simple and nice use for them would be, you could even make a half size, so you can get two in your pan at, at the same time, is to make a little wrap to go around the heads of your cutlery. So once you've used your cutlery in your, let's say it was like that, let me get a piece of cutlery to demonstrate. Let's say you've had your nice salad at work, for your lunch or whatever it is you had, a bowl of pasta, whatever, you could, oh, actually, maybe do it that way. There we go. Just 
dirty cutlery, even if you've given it a bit of a wash. There we go. Pop that in your bag. Nothing else is going to get mucky in your bag. No plastic. Yay. So I hope you'll find that useful. I hope you guys will give it a go. Honestly, you've seen it's so, so simple. Get the kids involved. Scraps. Brilliant. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> let's go and do some origami to make a bin liner. Hurrah for a bit of origami. Now, again, this one could not be more simple, but I'm going to try to make it really, really clear. I first saw this being demonstrated by a six-year-old kid in Canada. So if a six-year-old can do it, so can all of us. I mean, I do do it. Okay, so you want broadsheet newspaper, about three or four sheets. You can use a red top, but you're going to end up with a much, much tinier bin as it were. It might be a useful bin to put on your desk because it will be so small, but this is what I use for bits in my kitchen. So, three or four sheets of a broadsheet newspaper. I'm going to take this corner and fold it down so that I'm going to have eventually a perfect square. And I'm just going to get rid of this excess on this side. Bye bye excess. As I'm cutting this off, I'm already thinking of making some paper plant pots with it. That will go around my pot maker. We wound up, wound up, wound up, and we'll make the perfect height of pot for something with longer roots, such as a flint corn. Okay, so keep that fold in place. Then, very simply, I'm going to take that corner in that direction to create a crease, so right into this bottom corner. Show you again. Halfway along, fold it into the far bottom corner and make a crease. Then I'm gonna do the same with the top. So this is going to, oops, this is gonna come and fold over right into this far corner here. Gosh, I hope this is gonna be clear. I'll show you again a speeded up version in close up. All we've done that for is to make creases. So open it up again. We've got a nice crease here and a nice crease here. Now, going to this far point, bring it over to your newly made crease. Give it a firm down. This crease is now going to be permanent. And then, likewise, this one, the point, is going to go to this top edge corner here. Firm crease. Then, where's the middle one? Two, three, have I got sheets sticking together? One, two, three. Fold over. Down there, crease, flip it over. Fold, crease. And there, my friends, you have it. Your little bin liner. Now I know it's not huge, but hopefully, let's wriggle in for a chat. Where are you all? There you are. It's not huge, but hopefully you're not chucking too much away. So if you make it with, say, four or five sheets, just to make it a bit more robust, you could use this in your compost bin um, caddy, whatever you've got as well, and then you can just pick the whole thing up and chuck it in the compost. I try to not make any rubbish that is going straight to refuse rather than to recycling. So I find that this size is more than enough for me for oh, a couple of weeks. And then when it comes time to chuck it out, I just bring one of the flaps over, fold it down, give it a scrudge that way, and boom, it goes out with the refuse. 
give it a go. I'm going to show you that one more time, but a little bit more closely this time. how to do origami to make it actually flat on the bottom and stand. Like I say, if you do it with um, one of the red tops, it'll be a much, much sport, a smaller bin. But like I say, it might be the kind of thing that would be useful to have on the desk. So as you're, you know, chucking out scraps of paper, whatever, you could chuck it straight into your little desk bin. And then the whole lot could just go straight into recycling or into the compost bin. I really hope you found those two things useful and fun. Have a go. These are things which cost pennies. I mean, the newspaper costs nothing. Just go and catch a newspaper from your friends who do take newspapers. The only cost today really has been that little bit of beeswax. All the fabric, it's all off cuts. It's all stuff that was kind of looking for a new home anyway. So yeah, and I think for me, one of the joys of doing these things is it sort of it sort of reminds me of being a child in a way. It's that kind of rainy day project. <laughs> Remember, eons and eons ago, before the advent of computer games and social media, when on a rainy afternoon, <laughs> mums and dads up and down the land were desperately trying to think of things for their kids to do. But it's great. It brings out the child in me. I know that I'm I'm trying my best to do a little bit for the environment. I'm doing just a little bit every day. I'm sure it will go a long way in the future. So, have a go. Just think of ways in which you can stop buying plastic and use paper and cloth and other things instead, glass bottles, what have you. More than anything, have fun while you're at it. Let your creativity fly. Let your juices flow. Just get stuck in and try it yourself. I need to go and wash my hands now. <laughs> I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves.